What is going on, guys? Welcome to Greggles TV. This is Kyocera's newest phone. It is their DuraForce Pro 3 phone, and you get a two year warranty, and it's a heavy, heavy duty case. This is great for, you know, someone that's in construction and just has a very, very heavy duty job. And there's all kinds of features about this phone as well that you're probably going to honestly really really love very impressive things about this phone so let's talk about it so it's available on verizon and it's available right now I'll link it down below if you want to pick it up and there's like i said some crazy things about this phone so let's talk about it so we've got a 5.38 oled hd fhd plus scratch and shatter resistant display with 60 hertz refresh rate so it doesn't have any of the 90 or 120 hertz refresh rate on there you get six, six up to a 64 megapixel camera on there as well as a 16 megapixel ultra wide and 2 megapixel macro and then on the front you get your 8 megapixel camera with facial recognition you have a bunch of buttons on here so this button is your power button it's also your fingerprint button you have another dedicated button down here that acts as your camera button. So you can click that and I'll show you how to program these. This will open up your camera and take photos and all that kind of stuff. At the bottom, I have, you can see I have this popped off, but we'll show you that in a moment. Under here, you're going to have your USB-C charging and it's also blocked for dust and you know water and all that stuff. On the left hand side, you have your push to talk button, which I'll also show you. So if like using walkie talkie type functions, it's all built into that volume keys. You have an SOS button at the top as well. The SOS button can be programmed to do pretty much anything. Again, I will show you that in just a moment. You have this right here. This is how you lock and, and close the battery and then it just pops off. Whoops, I pulled it off. What's crazy about this is, it, you know, you get a battery obviously, which I, I've taken out for a moment. You can also input ST and SIM card. You can put up to a one gigabyte SD card in here, which is super, super impressive. Now you could theoretically buy more batteries as well. If you're, you know, you're always using your phone up and you want to make sure it doesn't, um, you know, die on you, pick up more batteries that we don't have to charge it up. It's a 4,200 milliamp battery and you lock it in just like that. And then from there, this back part just snaps right in. It's actually quite nice the way they have done this. I, I, I like it. I wish more phones were made of this, you know, kind of plastic rubbery type material and were able to uh, house the battery. It, it would be a lot easier on a lot of people's lives. And the construction of this is insane, guys. So you're going to get IP68 dust and water resistance with this thing, but then you also get five feet of military drop protection onto concrete. So if you drop this five feet on concrete, it's rated for that. So tons of protections built into this phone overall. Inside the box, you don't get anything really except for like a manual and a USB cable, USB-C cable, I should say. And that's it, you don't get a charging brick. So if you don't have a charging brick, you will have to purchase one. I will link one down below that I absolutely love um, for phones. It's inexpensive, it's reliable, and uh, makes great charging. Some other specs about this, it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 processor. So very capable processor, which is, is great to have on there. It also has the six gigabytes of RAM, which isn't that much, um, especially on an Android phone. It's a little bit low, to be honest with you. 128 gigs of storage. You can put more storage, like I mentioned earlier, on that micro SD card on there. It is the 5.38 inch display OLED 1080p plus 4270 milliamp battery Android 13 and you can do videos up to 4k on here and it has also ultra wideband for Verizon so pretty nice. You also get this on here it's going to give you attention to always lock in your battery. You can turn that off you can just hit do not show again and then hit okay and it'll go away. So here's the operating system you know just it looks very, you know, normal kind of Google, whatever you want to call it, pixel-like if you if you think of it that way, but just a kind of vanilla Android experience. There are quite a bit of apps pre-installed. You have your Google apps, which is kind of normal. You have your outdoor apps, such as a compass, bar barometer, and you get weather. You have a bunch of Verizon apps. So if you didn't want some of these Verizon apps, maybe you didn't want the Message Plus app, press and hold on it. Let's see if we can just delete it real quick. And we cannot. So some of these apps you're not going to be able to delete. Disney Plus came pre-installed. Candy, Sagic became pre-installed. Pre Gardenscapes. 
Royal match. There's a bunch of games pre-installed here too, but let's just see if I want to get rid of this. I can, I can get rid of it. So there you go. It'll get rid of it for you. But you know, nothing. It's not. Uh, it's not completely blocked up with stuff. But it, you know, it does have some bloatware. The display in, in general, not completely blown away by the quality of it. But it, again, it's it's. For what you're you're getting, it's a nine hundred dollar phone, which is kind of expensive. But you know, ten eighty p plus OLED. It's not color rich display, but it also doesn't look awful either. You know, I'd give it probably if I had to rate this screen, I'd give it like a six point five or seven out of ten. Brightness is not too bad. I have it at about sixty percent. And let's see, don't show that again. And, you know, I can definitely see it pretty good. It's not amazingly bright, but it's, you know, at least it's bright enough to be able to see somewhat outdoors in direct sunlight. You're going to struggle just a little bit. Now, I mentioned these buttons earlier. I've already programmed them, but if you want to, you can go into settings and then you have this button down here, this setting, I should say, that is called programmable keys. And you have your PTT key, which is that side one. You have your camera key, which is over here. And then you have your SOS key over here. So if you want to change these, I've already set them up. You can choose different things. So like I have my SOS key when I press it once, it's going to bring up my Google Assistant. But if I tap on here, I can easily choose something else. You can have it load an app or a certain action. Same thing, double pressing it, press and hold. I can use it to answer and end calls or wake up my device. All these keys are basically the same on how you use them. So I'll show you kind of what they do. So if I double press this camera button down here, it turns on my flashlight, turns it off. If I press and hold it, it opens up my calculator. If I press it once, it opens up my camera and you can use it as a shutter button too. There you go. Or if I was on video, I could press it and it will start, it will start and stop the video so pretty handy same thing with these buttons up here press this once it loads up my google assistant double press it it brings up my uh, google chrome because that's what i programmed it to if i press and hold it it will bring up my youtube app and again that's how i program these to be able to do that push to talk let's check this out this is a literally walkie talkie thing so we'll check, check uh, test this out curtis curtis how's it going it's greg we got, we're recording right now. We'll just wait for, wait for him. Yeah, read you loud and clear. Yeah, yeah, this, one of the nice things about this phone is, is how loud that speaker is, especially on the walkie talkie. Very, very clear. Uh, where, where, I'm in California. What state are you in right now? I'm in San Diego, California. So we're oh. obviously somewhat <laughs> close to each other. We're actually right down the street from each other. I'm also in San Diego. So thanks again, Curtis. I appreciate it. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. Enjoy, enjoy hearing your feedback on uh, what you think of our device coming up here. Will do. Over and out. Thank you. Over and out. So kind of cool, you know, you have this built-in talk feature that, you know, if someone else has that push to talk feature, old school thing, not even old school thing, you know, think of Nextel and all those companies that had that. This phone has it built right, <clears throat> built right in. So it's very, very nice. Volume buttons are nice and easy to see. And, you know, I said this is like a, a vanilla type Android experience and it is and it isn't. See, like these volume, the way these volume things look is different if you, if you know and you remember that kind of thing. And also swiping up, this just looks different. Slightly, you get suggested links, you got all that stuff. So it looks slightly different from there. But overall, in terms of just the body alone and the buttons, I absolutely love it. I think it's a great hardcore kind of phone for you. You know, you have to worry about dropping it in water because it's water resistant or you can replace the battery. I love that you can also just have multi-function buttons all around the phone, you know, this could be a good phone for someone that's a little bit older, doesn't know how to open up certain things. And they have these programmable buttons that you could set up or, or use, or even if you're someone that's using these in terms of just being able to uh, make your life easier. It's nice to have all those buttons all around the phone. Now, I told you this has ultra wideband, so I wanna kinda show you a speed test 
I'm gonna, I'm not on Wi-Fi right now. You can see I'm on 5G. I'm also in my house. So, you know, I don't have the absolute best, best connection, but I thought, you know, I ran this earlier and I was getting 200 on a, a speed test on 5G with Verizon, which in the past, I know for sure I wasn't getting anything like that before. I was getting pretty bad scores when I just had a five general 5G phone, but you can see very, very fast phones. If I was in it, you could potentially get, what is their speeds like? Five gigahertz or something crazy. This, they get some crazy speeds on their ultra wideband, but I'm indoors. I don't even, I'm not even in a super amazing connection here. You can see I'm not even getting full bars and I'm still getting really, really good speeds, especially on the download side. Upload side, definitely passable, definitely usable at over, at almost 15 megs per second. So very happy with the scores from that. Now, what about the cameras? What is the quality on that? I'll show you some pictures in just a moment, but let me just show you the camera app in general. Very simple, very easy to use camera app. You got your photos, your videos. You got more. Oh, there you go. You got more. There are tons of camera features. Um, so I'll show you some samples of videos and photos that I took with this phone. Let me know what you think. Does it look good? Does it sound good? Got my fan on, so be curious if it picks up a lot of that wind noise or not. Let me know in the comments down below. Here's the back camera. The back camera records at 1080p, not 4K, and microphones, think of all that. Stabilization, is all of this looking good or not? Let me know, again, in the comments down below. Here's the ultra wide on the back side of the rear phone, the rear cameras. What do you guys think? Let me know. Good, bad, indifferent, you're the boss. Now, I wanna go into some gaming right here. We've got Roblox, and this Roblox Realistic Force demo is really a good game to try out uh, for just to show if you know how well it can run. So I'm gonna run this game, and Roblox gaming generally is pretty easy to run on most devices. You know, they have these automatic graphics that it'll set to. Now, like I said, this is one of the better looking games on Roblox, it's pretty realistic in, in certain points of this map. I can tell, you know, with that seven gen one processor, you know, obviously I could play this and, and if I gave this to a kid, for instance, I don't think they'd be that turned off by it. And obviously you can also run games that aren't 3D like this that are just like little word games or and those will run perfectly fine. Let me do one thing here, I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to increase the graphics to as much as I can. So here we go, we got automatic, let's change that to full screen. We'll go this right here. We're gonna turn this all the way up, doing the graphics quality. I'm gonna turn that off and come back here. All right, so let's just try this, see how this runs now. And it's, you know, it's running admirable at the highest quality settings. You know, there is a little bit that you can tell like the, I can tell anyway, that the frames per second isn't super smooth. I would guess it's probably in the twenties, but it's definitely still playable at the highest graphical settings. Again, well, maybe not completely playable, but um, you know, somewhat playable on here. So not too bad with the seven gen one processor in general, just on a game. And I want to talk more about the performance again. This isn't a super smooth experience. There's, there is, you know, it, there's a little bit of jagged edges on here. It's definitely not the smoothest phone I've seen on here, but it's totally usable. I wouldn't be concerned with really using it all that much. If you, you can see it loads apps pretty much fine. It's just like the animations and it could be because it's only 60 Hertz uh, and I'm so used to 120 at this point, but it's not super smooth, but it's, it's not awful either. <laughs> These speakers get ridiculously loud, very loud. Now for music, it's a little bit too loud for me, a little bit too trebly, but 
I think as you heard probably from the push to talk thing I had, it's great for phone calls and things like that. But for music, it's it's loud, but it's and you can obviously lower it, but it's a little bit too trouble. I wish there was a little bit more oomph in there. But overall, very freaking loud uh, speakers. I'll show you another video where I'm talking just to show you all. In this video, we're going to talk about the Asus ROG Ally and some premium accessories. So without further ado, let's jump into our first thing. That first thing is an eGPU. Now, they have a couple options, but I think the two options to go by are the 2020. So speakers overall, pretty freaking good. So overall for the DuraForce Pro 3, I would say, you know, for 900 bucks, spec to spec, feeling to feeling, feature to feature, you know, this phone is, uh, is a lot different than say like a, a Pixel 7a or something. This is a more rugged device. You don't have to necessarily get a case. It's got a huge IP rating, IP68 and huge drop rating at five feet onto cement. Um, it's got a lot of these functional button, buttons that do different things. You know, it's going to be a phone for a specific person, like a person that has a construction job or a hardcore type job that doesn't want to mess around and have to worry about much. And they can also replace the battery. Those are big things and add internal storage. Um, so it's, it's for that type of person. I, I wouldn't say, you know, if you're a, just a normal Joe, grab this phone, unless you're always worried about breaking it. You don't want to get a case and you just kind of want it to be, you know, somewhat normal. It's pretty easy to hold in your hand. It doesn't feel overly bulky. And it's the screen's small enough um, that it doesn't feel massive, which is a good thing. So if you want to pick it up, it's linked down below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And we'll see you down the road.